Welcome to the 33rd episode of the Guitar Builders Basics video podcast. Luthier's tips, tricks and training from me, Ben Crow, at Crimson Guitars in the UK. Did I say UK twice? I do, no. Uh, this is now the third take. <laughs> We've, uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, today I'm going to give you my step-by-step -step process for cutting fret slots by hand. The, uh, this is something that I've almost got out of the habit of doing. I have apprentices and I have uh, fret slotting jigs um, and machine fret slotting, etc. So, however, there is always a time in your life that you will need to cut your fret slots by hand. And one of those times is like I'm having to do today, which is cut a multi scale, uh, multi -scale fretboard. So, this, this client has asked for a 629 and a 650 mil scale length fretboard, and well, I'm going to oblige. We are working on, and um, uh, it's a new fret slotting mitre box jig thing that is imminent actually, and that will be capable of cutting uh, fan frets, but, uh, but it's not out yet, and uh, uh, there's so much to do. In other news, uh, you have seen me announce now several times that I've sorted out my issue with nut slotting files, and uh, I thought I had. Our first attempt was to take saw blade, very high quality 32 TPI, bimetal, beautiful stuff, um, and then grind that to the correct gauge that we require. And, uh, that was all well and good, but it just wasn't giving the quality of cut that we required. And uh, I decided instead to go away and learn how to actually make actual files. Now, instead of, I'm not going to go into the full, I'm not going to go into a full sales pitch. Basically, I've sorted out our nut slotting files. Um, I made wooden handles. The wooden handles failed because they weren't quite strong enough because they have to be narrow and thin so you can see what you're doing, and they snapped. Uh, so an entire batch needed to be redone after we discovered that they snapped. Uh, now we have a handmade, hand cut, precision gauged file in a hand forged aluminium handle. And uh, they're precision gauged to all sorts of gauges for guitar building, etc. And uh, this is the news. This is what the tool, the tool making boys have been working on for the last couple of days finally uh, getting these all sorted. So if you have some on order, they will be going out uh, today. Some, some left yesterday even. And uh, I'm very, very excited. I'll do a precision, I'll do a, a proper video describing them and showing them in use at some point soon. Uh, now, this podcast, it's inspired by the awesomely talented guild member, Heretic. Uh, go into the forums and uh, find him and have a look at his six string bass build. Um, now, it, basically in, in this six string bass, uh, and you can see all the progress pics on, on, in, in our forums, he cut his own fret slots. Um, and the way he does it is, is quite interesting. He prints out life-size templates, sticks them onto the board with spray glue, and cuts using that as a guide. Um, he says that the paper adds protection from air and saw thrusts but does leave a load of residue and crap to get rid of later. First things first, uh, in a very recent video, I made a video all about the greatest trick for luthiers ever or some such hyperbole. Uh, and it's my masking tape trick where you use masking tape and super glue. And that is uh, the perfect way uh, for Heretic to glue down his templates, <coughs> or at least his printed out um, plans because it doesn't leave residue unless you're using particularly sticky uh, masking tape. So that is, that is one tip for him. Uh, however, uh, it just got me thinking, and I've done a couple of videos on cutting fret slots, but I've also changed my tune recently. Uh, now, I've been doing a lot of research into tools, and, uh, and in particular the Japanese tools and the way they use them. And you know that I love Japanese saws. They are perfect for cutting fret slots. I've covered this in a recent podcast, actually. And um, we in the West pick up a saw, 
and that's our pencil line, and then we cut. The Japanese use a marking knife almost exclusively. They will mark their line with a knife and then use the saw to cut the fret slot. And the saw will follow your, your marking knife line and make it much, much easier. Now, in the past, what I have been doing is uh, marking out my, on, on my fretboard with a bit of pencil and then possibly using a small scalpel blade to, to mark along the fret. And then I go along with, with this beautiful saw that has got a, <laughs> one of those horrible concave uh, fret crowning files on it. The only use I've found for that file is to keep my saw blade straight. And I use this blunt saw to create my initial cut um, because it's fairly strong and stable and uh, then gives me something to follow with the gentle and flexible Japanese saw. So, and, and that is how I do it. But nowadays, what I do is I follow the line with a marking knife. And this is, uh, this is actually a stunning, stunning little marking knife. Go to Ashley Isles Tools. Um, I think it's ashleyisles.co.uk. And this is one of their marking knives. They do right and left handed. I use the right handed one uh, because I'm right handed and it seems to be the most useful thing. And this will follow your ruler and do the job absolutely perfectly. So you, I'm going to do a close up just for fun. The podcast normally doesn't have demonstrations, but today it shall. Um, it also gives me a, a, an excuse to, while I'm changing camera angles, to have a sip of coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. So here's the lovely little Ashley Isles marking knife. It's a uh, simple and for a hand forged tool, cheap item. Uh, all right, so get a flexible ruler. In this case, I'm using my general ultra rule and make absolutely certain you've got your fret slot. I've just filmed a, a tutorial following how I mark out the fan fretboard and that is going to be released very soon. So yeah, be careful to follow the line perfectly. And that gives you something to follow. Uh, the winge, winge is a, is a nightmare. But essentially, I've now got a cut. I'm gonna go over that several times to make it deeper and uh, more precise and easier to follow. Uh, in normal wood, that wouldn't be an issue, but uh, yeah, the wind is just pushing everything all over the place. So after that stage, I then go along, uh, if I want to be very careful with this saw, and I follow the cut, and I'm not going to do it now, because if I do it now, I'm going to screw up, basically. Uh, I need to clamp this down. And for the purposes of the demonstration, I haven't bothered yet. And I will then go and get either a Japanese saw or my PAX fretting saw, depending on what mood I'm in, and cut the frets off. Now, here's a little trick. You always worry about the depth of your cut. And a lot of people will have a wooden depth stop in in the saw blade and frankly that's just not there's no need for that put a piece of masking tape down and that acts as your guide in fact I've done it on the wrong side I normally have it on on this side so that I can see but as you cut you then cut matching the radius and if you've got that the right depth um, your slots will not be much deeper than they need to be which is really rather important, isn't it? So, there we have it. Uh, that is how I cut my fret slots. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is one of the first uh, hand-forged nut slotting files. And uh, 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I want to keep that hand beaten sort of look. It will make them all nice and pretty. But uh, oh no, they fit perfectly in the hand. I think. Uh, I think I need to stop improving things. Anyhow, thank you very very much for watching. Uh, please, obviously, don't forget to support us and send us all your money by buying tools or joining the guild. Um, check out the workshop diary and our Facebook and Twitter feeds and and all of that jazz. Uh, have a great day. I will be back. We'll be back soon. Cheers.